Well, it's a semi-gloomy Thursday here at Oshkosh 2011. We're hoping for a little for the visibility to improve, the clouds lift, and for folks to be able to enjoy a little bit of blue sky. But let's face it, around here the real excitement is motors. What's happening right now with the whole IE series? It's one of our, I say, crowning achievements. This is a, a product that we're extremely proud of and uh, extremely excited to be bringing this to market. Like I said, this is about motors for Lycoming. The IE2 represents kind of stitching into the fabric everything that we know what to do in the aviation side with some of the most modern automotive technology stitch into a platform that's got a lot of legs on it for many decades. It's a very kind of open architecture which anticipates not only the engines that we have today, that basic core architecture, but once you have that core computer, that strategy laid out on how to control an aviation engine in a Part 33 environment and certified environment, you've got a great stepping stone to a lot of different things. So big news on this one, and people were paying attention to the May 9th edition of Aviation Week. They found out that the I-2 was flying on another aircraft for about a year and a half before then on the Northrop Grumman Firebird, which is a platform that's kind of out of the range of most everybody here at Oshkosh to be able to purchase them. But we're very pleased to have had Northrop Grumman now select the I-2 as its propulsion system for Firebird. Of course, it's also flying on the Lance Air Piston Evolution. But the biggest thing here is that no matter how the fuel situation rolls out, and it's got to roll out a certain specific way for the existing fleet, this engine sets you up for just about anything that we could anticipate coming in the future. The question that comes from a very conservative industry uh, that says, well, you know, my 540 has always been fine by me, my 360 has always been fine by me. What does this technology really bring to aviation in the 21st century? Well, for a very long time, uh, pilots have spending a lot more time on it than they should on engine management versus flying the aircraft. So. If you take a look at the very first thing that IE2 technology brings, it's reduced pilot workload so you can concentrate on the other cockpit load that's going on the aircraft. The other element is no matter how good of a pilot you are, you're usually not setting up to do engine management until you've taken care of everything else that's in the cockpit. With this engine, the engine management is actually real time and optimized, so you're giving the power request and flying, the engine is taking over, the computer's taking over all other aspects. So you're actually in an optimized state of engine control no matter where you are in any phase of the flight. It's still an aviation engine. It's still going to crank a little bit harder as you get that thing turning versus the automotive side. But when you push the button, it's going to start. And in any phase of flight, you're going to be running at minimum fuel flow consumption. Magic question, does this thing run lean to peak? The engine runs lean to peak. The engine runs rich at peak. The engine runs on peak. The engine runs at minimum fuel flow for the power that you want out of the engine. The DFC-90 all-digital attitude-based autopilot delivers significant performance and safety improvements over previous generation systems. Its innovative flight envelope protection guards against autopilot-induced stalls, and the straight and level mode provides one-button recovery from unusual attitudes for an added measure of safety. Immensely popular within the Cirrus community, the DFC-90 is now being made available for a growing list of aircraft including Piper Matrix and Mirage, Cessna 182s, and Beach Bonanzas and Barons. Fly with confidence. Fly with DFC-90. Operative word being, of course, runs. The engine runs, and the engine runs evenly on all cylinders. So anything that you worry about in managing a twin turbocharged, intercooled, high horsepower engine in any phase of flight, you just set it and that's the power that you want. It's a pretty amazing. I've been in some, uh, some of the maneuvers with our test pilots that I would certainly not have conducted with myself and it is amazing at uh, how well controlled this engine is. It should also, at the end of the day, you know, one of the big issues is will I, you know, here's the state of TBO, but the general question is will I reach TBO? With these types of controls in place, eliminating the offset conditions that a, a pilot may get into in certain circumstances, you're going to have a much higher probability of reaching TBO on this engine. And it also gives Lycoming a means to take a look at could we possibly increase TBO in the future when we start taking a look at image management systems like this. And you have an optional data logging module for this, don't you? Yes, there's a data logging module that's available off the engine. Uh, of course, all the parameters on the engine are also transmittable to the glass cockpit that's in the aircraft as well. Uh, so depending upon how the engine is implemented in the aircraft, which is a choice of the airframer, you have a huge variety of data that's going to be available onto it. Well, as the HAL 9000 taught us, uh, every now and then something electronic does go wrong. What about the reversionary modes for operating this engine uh, in any kind of failure mode? 
there's actually several modes on this as the there's a first level is uh, redundant instrumentation and then the other element on this which is rather unique and actually patented in some cases is what we call uh, virtual sensors mm -hmm. there's actually you have two hardware channels in the FADEX so you have dual redundancy you have redundancy right there but then you actually have a software simulator that sits in between the two and says okay FADEX A says this FADEX B says that how do you arbitrate between that? So there's actually a virtual layer between the two software sides gauging that. So from the standpoint of the computer, it's probably an incorrect term, but it's almost a pseudo triplex system. So dual and hardware, triplex and software. And then from the standpoint of the sensors, if you lose a sensor, the engine will interpolate for that missing sensor system on there. Um, give you an idea, there's almost 60,000 lines of code in this beast, okay? Uh, only about 20,000 lines of that code are actually used for engine management. Okay. Another third of it is used for arbitrating which channel is correct, and another third is for gauging whether we believe the sensors are not in the, in the, in the beast. So it's a, uh, a little bit different than your automobile in, in that respect, but it is designed from the beginning to have uh, decades-long legs in terms of its basic architecture. Welcome to the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Real-time, 24-7 online, audio, and video programming, where aviation has been getting updated for over a decade. Distributing over 11,000 stories, features, audio, and video programs every year, only ANN covers aviation and aerospace with this much depth, insight, and expertise. Check us out on the web at aero-news.net. What is the deployment plan right now for this technology? Where does it go from here? Well, the, the things that we can talk about is obviously the Lancer Piston Evolution and the Northrop Grumman Firebird. Obviously, I think those customers are hopeful that they start moving aircraft. Very different purposes on each one of those platforms. What I will say is that we are actively working on OEM side. Uh, Technam has announced Lycoming to be using this technology on their P2012, which will be the first heavy twin produced in over 25 years. So we're very excited about that. That's obviously uh, an aircraft to be designed and engine to be integrated for uh, their announced first customer, Cape Air. The, uh, but for Lycoming, I would say uh, we've got a lot of, lot of uh, good, solid interest on the project. It is not a 0233 integration on an aircraft. It's a, uh, a very high technology in engine with a much greater level of, of uh, integration scope for a, a different class of aircraft. But uh, it is a beast, and uh, it uh, will allow us to do things that uh, will be pretty amazing in the future. What I would say is that this is not the end of the story. This is pretty much the beginning. We needed a uh, breakthrough in engine controls to be able to enable the next level of engine development. This is a stepping stone, much like the spark ignition system on the simple engine is a stepping stone there. The IE2 is a stepping stone to a different breed of engine uh, for the ongoing future.